You see, Sonny? You see? You see, Sonny? This is how... This is how the game is played. Y you see, this is how the game is played. And... You got to throw your fears. Throw... Just throw your fears to the wind. And you gotta... Be ready to give up your heart. Cause... Sonny, this ain't no game, Sonny. This is how we play the game, Sonny. This is... This is a true test of your, true test of your ability to throw curb, curb balls at the other guy. If you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so that's both of the, um, uh, bug in a hole related sculptures on the bottom floor taken care of. And that was the weirdest sentence that ever spoketh. So 19 out of 30, that's 63%. Aha, uh -huh. no, okay, I'm, I'm done done with life. This guy's still looking not too good. Remember the, um, the guy in Ocarina of Time? Is there, like, some... Because I, I know, like, the guy in Twilight Princess, like, slowly comes back to life, and that's... that's kind of creepy. I think the guy in Ocarina of Time... Or, no, there's, like, five of them. But there's also, like, one big guy, and does he, like, slowly come back to being a human? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's something. Anyway, yeah, we have to go through this section again. And now you can see why it's easier at night, because they have, like, the little white pellets. They look like pellets. And just to show you their line of sight, make it easier to avoid getting caught. And now we're back in the swaps. Spider house. Easy as pie. Lemon pie. Easy as pie. 3.14159265 something. I don't know. I don't know all the digits. Maybe that's something I could memorize, but I don't feel like it. Uh, yes. There, there are no bugs left in holes. Ah, oh, but the but then, oh, but, but you're getting water. Okay, I got, I got, I understand your motive now. Gotta get that clear, fresh pool and spring. Yeah. Anyway. Um. That's a motorcycle. Maybe I should close the window. I really don't feel like closing the window, though. It's kind of, it kind of relaxes me to just kind of have an, ambience, because if my bedroom was completely silent, I don't know, it would just frustrate me. Although I, I do focus better in silence, although I'm not sure, people always talk about like how they focus better with like a little bit of like ambient noise, but like not a lot, but, like they can't focus in complete silence. Like, I wouldn't be- I probably wouldn't be able to focus in complete silence. Like, if I'm doing stuff just like cleaning my room or something, I- I notice it goes a lot faster when I'm listening to music. I don't know. Because it's like you have like a creative side of your brain and it's like the side that gets like the most it's like the side of your brain that gets the most jumpy or something when you have to do chores and so I don't know something about music I guess relaxes the right side of your brain or whatever it is the right side or the left side or I don't know what it is I don't know I don't know my brain that well one of my friends was saying to me the human mind is a machine that sole goal is to understand itself, or, or something, or something like that. And the human mind can probably never come close to understanding itself. And then we were talking about Myers-Briggs and like how it isn't backed up by any science. And like, I used to be super obsessed with Myers-Briggs, but I was always a little skeptical of it too, so... I don't know, it's good for me to have a basis of my skepticism now. Although I'm still pretty interested in Myers-Briggs, and I'm still like... I still think it does explain some of the major differences in people. But like, like if you take it too seriously, it's like, it's like, no, like, human, human beings have to be taken with like more shades of gray than that. Or I don't know. 
I don't know what I'm saying. I do know what I'm saying. I'm conscious of what I'm saying, but I'm not sure how to put the ideas together. How about that? Are you happy? I'm not happy. I'm kidding. I'm pretty happy considering I have a YouTube channel that people seem to like. And, um... And I'm... I don't know. I have a lot of friends. And I'm doing okay for, like, just trying to keep myself financially supported, I guess, by just doing a lot of busy work over the summer. Which is what that competition was about, and I don't know. I don't know, it's something something about my, just like, my creative drive, it's just, it makes sense to keep myself busy. But I just don't want to overwork myself, because I said something about, I said something last time about, you know, just like, being so, like, crazy that I just, like, deprive myself of sleep. I don't think I've been depriving myself of sleep, but, like, I wake up in the morning and, like, I can't do anything. I just kind of have to lie on the couch, paralyzed for, like, an hour or so. Although if I, like, if I, like, turn on the TV or turn on some music or, like, play a computer game... Seeing of computer games, I've been playing, um... Old Man's Journey, which is made by, um, oh, my throat. It's made by, um, Broken Rules, the same people who developed and yet it moves. It has, like, a very different art style and tone from and yet it moves, but it's kind of, it has, like, a very similar idea, kind of like the 2D platformer and you're manipulating your environment to, to be able to explore further. It has this one section that I just got to, which I won't spoil anything about it, but it kind of ru ruins the, um, r realistic, like, the realisticness of the, of the plot. <laughs> just because, it, you know, there, it's like, it's obvious, it's obviously not realistic. But, like, the entire game up to that point is pretty realistic. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's a cool game. I like the art style in it. The story so far has been like sort of interesting, but like not like captivating or anything. I mean, I I like how they kept it simplistic. The music has been like a nice atmosphere, but the music in at some parts just gets kind of annoying. Um for the first time yesterday, I I am um, played Abzu, or however you pronounce it, A A B Z U with a carrot over it in all capital letters, which is um, made by the same game developers as Journey, and I love Journey. I've never played it, but I've watched like I watched a let's play of it. Yes, I watched Lucagen play it back in the day, bro. I know I'm not cool, but um. Journey is a beautiful game, so when I found out that Abzu was made by the same developer, like, I was pretty interested in it. Um, I had never heard of it, but, um, my friend gave it to me on Steam for, like, a birthday present, and my birthday was back in February. So, um, I played it, I, like, got it, like, right after he gave it to me, and I haven't played it until now, and... And, um, I was kind of worried that it wouldn't, like, really function well on my computer. But I downloaded it and got the got the game to run after a few tries and a few minutes of just kind of waiting. And, uh, it was kind of choppy. Because, like, I have a laptop that's great for working. It's probably not fantastic for games, but I'm not, like, a huge PC gamer, so I didn't really care. Abzu looks really choppy on my computer, and, like, when I hit, like, A and D to turn my character left and right, like, it's about, like, a good second of delay. But, like, aside from that, and just kind of getting used to the controls, and, like, one thing I still hate about it is that, is like, when you press A or D to turn left or right, like, the camera 
swings and it's like immediate and it's like the camera swings behind you and it's like so violent it like disorients me every time but um I kind of wish the game controlled a little bit more like Endless Ocean because Endless Ocean you have a pointer and you use the pointer to control your direction just like by pointing on the screen it'll follow the pointer um, I think that would work a lot better for a game in the ocean instead of using like WASD as like arrow keys but um, it's cool I like the art style I like the music I like kind of the pace of the game so far I mean the pace of the game is like a lot a lot different from Endless Ocean Blue World I mean like I played through the first 20 minutes and it felt like a lot happened <laughs> no chance of that with Endless Ocean. I'll, I, I'm kind of, I'm partially kidding. But... I miss Endless Ocean. Anyway, we're almost done with this spider house. We're like 97% there. And uh, we gotta find that last Skulltula. And it's in this room. And it's gonna drive me crazy. And notice how, like, quiet this place is because like everywhere you go there's like the kind of like scratching sound like that <laughs> of sp like just spiders crawling which is cool you know it's like a auditory like detective way of, of finding out when the spiders are near and everything but like it can get on your nerves after a while but it's like it's spooky like listen to how quiet this room is oh and you can hear it and I'm like, there's one left in this room, and then I'm, I'm gonna spend, I'm going to spend the next minute just kind of looking for it, because that sound is gonna drive me nuts, and this, more in particular, the silence in between hearing that sound is gonna drive me nuts. I feel like this is an episode of The Twilight Zone, I'm like, this is what's gonna happen to me in the future. But no, this is all this is all pre-recorded. Like I recorded this footage weeks ago, and it's just taking me taking me that long to get around to actually commentating it. But it's cool. I'm excited. I'm making progress on Majora's Mask. It feels good. I'm getting all these side quests out of the way. There are a ton of side quests in this game. Like I like I mentioned. Although they're gonna be substantial side quests. Like they're gonna lead to masks and heart pieces and stuff. And they're gonna you're gonna feel like you're getting stuff done. I don't know, I feel like Breath of the Wild has side quests, but a lot of them just seem to be kind of like really like weird. Like, like really, a side quest shows up in your notebook and like the reward is like 20 rupees or something. It's like that's not a side quest and that shouldn't be like showing up in my notebook as something important. But like I, like I mentioned before, I have like the most stuff that I've done with Breath of the Wild is just kind of exploring and looking for shrines and Korok seeds. Korok seeds are fun. So yes, we got the Mask of Truth and um, we can read Gossip Stones and read the thoughts of animals. So back to Clock Town and we're just gonna do a few more things. This, um, this is kind of like a full mini side quest. A full mini side quest. That's kind of an oxymoron. And we get a title deed from this guy, and then he leaves, and I don't know where he goes, like back home or something, or like he leaves in search of business. And then we go to Southern Swamp and we take our title deed over to him, and he's like, magic beans, blah blah blah, and then he tells this story about like how he'd like to move out of Southern Swamp into a more populated area and do business there, and he wants to be a cosmopolitan, and he wants to be a cool, a cool dude. Ah, uh, I hope this video is over soon, because my throat is really getting tired. Yay, piece of heart, and... I usually get all those pieces of heart from, like, the land title deeds, because you will see there's more of them. Um, like, in order, but I just, I just felt like getting that one and filling up my heart container. So one last piece of heart, and we're going to use the Mask of Truth, and it's the final day, and we've really had, like... We've really milked the three-day cycle, like we've done 
like, I usually, like, what happens is I'll, like, do something and, and it'll just be, like, first day and I'll do, like, a thing. And it'll be, like, a really small thing. And... And then, like, reset. But yes, Mask of Truth, you can... You can, um, read the thoughts of animals. It's kind of funny. So you can read, uh, the thoughts of all these different dogs. And I consistently pick the one that, uh, that, uh, takes second place. Because I remember Skulkit 3 watching his LP of this a while ago. Oh, I love this glitch! The dog hovers in midair. Uh, but yeah, I remember Skulkit 3 always picking the one that says, Whew, I'm in this for my wife and kids. Because, you know, it's it's sentimental, it's like he values his family and everything. But I think the one who says something like, I'm unstoppable, or something like that, is really the one who gets first place. And you'll notice that the music cuts off. The music cuts off as it's supposed to, like, go into the next section of the music, and that kind of bothers me. Like, like you never get to hear the whole track, because the it's, like, it's a certain length every time, and it, like, it cuts off, and whatever, I don't know. I think you get to hear that song later in the game. It's not even a great song, it just bothers me that, like, like, it gets cut off as like a new section of the music with like different instruments and everything is about to it's about to play. Anyway, here's the dog. And I'm gonna bet a lot of money on this dog. And I'm gonna go like horse racing with this dog. Horse horse racing and gambling and all that is so silly. But anyway, we're gambling on dogs, so it's okay. Dogs. Look at these dogs. Run, doggy, run! I believe in you! Oh, oh, oh! See, look at him, he's catching up. He's in first! Yes! Oh, he's beat. The gold one is... The gold one is taking over. And he's consistently in second. And he's consistently in second. And he finishes in second. Beautiful. And feed all bomb. da 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 If anybody knows what Fiddle Bomb is, they get a cookie. So, uh, looks like it's time for me to sign off. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Majora's Mask. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.